Let's take a look at the Navy's most versatile jet, the F-18. The F-18 is a multi-role, twin-engine, supersonic, carrier-capable fighter and attack aircraft. Introduced initially as the Hornet, the F-18 serves in the United States Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Forces of several nations. The F-18 is also used by the U.S. Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, also known as the Blue Angels. Notable features of the F-18 include twin tails, folding wings, a tail section that has vertical stabilizers forward of the elevators, a unique extended wing design with leading edge extensions or LEX, reinforced landing gear for carrier operations, and wingtip missile racks. Over the course of its lifespan, the F-18 has evolved into a true multi-role aircraft, serving as a fighter, ground attack aircraft, electronics war platform, and even aerial refueling tanker. The F-18 was built to replace the Navy's aging A-4, A-7, and Marine F-4s while serving alongside as a complement to the F-14. Before we go any further, it's important to note that this video covers the F-18 up to the C and D versions of the Hornet. I'll be making a separate video on the F-18 E and F Super Hornet, and be sure to subscribe so that you can watch that video as soon as it comes out. All right, so now let's look at the specifications for the F-18 C and D Hornet. The F-18 internally carries the 6-barrel 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon, which can fire 6,000 rounds a minute, making it effective against air, ground, and naval targets. In addition, the F-18 has 9 external hardpoints, which can carry a total load of over 13,000 pounds. The distribution of these 9 hardpoints are as follows. 2 are on the wingtips, 4 under the wing, and 3 under the fuselage. Since the F-18 is a multi-role fighter attack aircraft, the combination of weapons the Hornet can carry is extraordinary. For example, for air-to-air -air engagements the F-18 can carry heat-seeking AIM-9 Sidewinders, radar-guided AIM-7 Sparrows, or radar-guided AIM-120 AMRAMs. When it comes to air-to-surface missiles, the F-18 can equip AGM-65 Mavericks, AGM-88 Harm anti-radar missiles, the AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon, and the Anti-Ship AGM-84 Harpoon, just to name a few. Additionally, the F-18 can carry freefall bombs and rockets ranging from the 500-pound Mark 82s, CBU-87 Cluster Bombs, to the Paveway series of laser-guided bombs. Support and defensive options include external fuel tanks, chaff and flare dispensers, and the Advanced Lightning Targeting Pod. This list is by no means exclusive. In fact, an entire video could be made on F-18 loadout options and combinations. Let me know if you'd like to see that in a future video in the comments below. When it comes to targeting and tracking, the F-18 carries the AN-APG-73 radar, which is an improved version of the AN-APG-65 system. This improved version provides the F-18 with an excellent air-to-air -air radar, which includes a track while scan or TWS mode. The TWS mode gives the F-18 fire and forget capability, meaning it can lock a target, fire a missile, and seek another target while the missile independently tracks its target. The radar also has a raid assessment mode which permits radar separation of closely spaced targets, allowing the F-18 to differentiate and engage both. In addition to potent air-to-air -air features, this system also incorporates high-resolution ground radar tracking, which allows for accurate detection of ground or naval targets. This allows the F-18 to lock onto ground targets that may be attempting to hide amongst ground clutter. This radar system has not only proven itself, it is also designed to be very easy to maintain and operate. 
Seeking to replace its aging A4s, F4s, and A7s, the U.S. Navy initiated the Naval Fighter Attack Experimental, or VFAX, program in 1973 to acquire a multi-role aircraft that could replace the three legacy aircraft types. One other requirement was that the new aircraft had to be less expensive and easier to operate than the F-14, which was already proving to be difficult to maintain. A big advocate of the VFAX program was Admiral Kent Lee, whose experience as both a fighter and attack pilot made him uniquely qualified for the role of championing a multi-role fighter. After briefly considering low-cost versions of the F-14 and F-15, Secretary of Defense James R. Schlesinger ordered the Navy to consider the two finalists in the Air Force Lightweight Fighter or LWF program. These two finalists were the YF-16 Fighting Falcon and the YF-17 Cobra. And even though the YF-16 had already been adopted by the Air Force, the Navy did not like the idea of flying on one engine over water. Ruling out the YF-16, the Navy asked Northrop and McDonnell Douglas to further develop the YF-17 Cobra into a carrier-capable aircraft. After extensive redesign and enhancements, the new aircraft was designated the FA-18 and given the name Hornet. The Hornet's modifications included strengthening the undercarriage, airframe, and tailhook to help withstand punishing carrier operations. Additionally, folding wings were incorporated to save on deck space. Since naval operations typically involve long flights over water, fuel capacity was increased by over 4,000 pounds. To help increase payload capacity, wings and stabilizers were also enlarged. Furthermore, the flight control system was upgraded to a quadruple redundant fly-by-wire system the first of its kind to be installed in a production fighter. The Hornet was among the first aircraft to make extensive use of multifunction displays or MFDs. Using multiple MFDs, Hornet pilots can choose between fighter or attack modes, or both at the push of a button. This ability is known as a force multiplier since it allows the same aircraft to switch roles on the fly in a dynamically developing scenario. The first F-18 was introduced in September of 1978 with blue on white colors. On one side of the aircraft was marked Navy, and the other side, Marines. The first operational Hornet was delivered to the Marine Squadron VFMA-314, aka the Black Knights, on January of 1983. The Navy took delivery of its first Hornet in January of 1984 as part of VFA-25, also known as the Fist of the Fleet. The Hornet has proven to be a reliable, easy to maintain multi-role aircraft. Initially operated by the US Navy and Marines, the F-18 has also been exported to Australia, Canada, Finland, Kuwait, Malaysia, Spain, and Switzerland. Since no other country uses the F-18 for carrier operations, all export versions are sold without the automatic carrier landing system. Additionally, Canada was the first and is the largest export customer today. And finally, NASA also used a modified F-18 as a High Alpha Research Vehicle, or HARV, to test controlled flight at high angles of attack. This F-18 ultimately produced stable flight at 70 degrees angle of attack, where the previous maximum had been 55 degrees. F-18s have been in continuous global deployment since 1985, establishing a reputation as a versatile, effective, and easy to maintain combat aircraft. The F-18's first combat action was in April 1986, where elements from the USS Coral Sea flew suppression of enemy air defenses, or SEED, missions against Libyan air defenses during Operation Prairie Fire and an attack on Benghazi as part of Operation El Dorado Canyon. During the Gulf War of 1991, the F-18 proved its multi-role capabilities. On the first day of the war, Navy pilots Lieutenant Commander Mark Fox and his wingman Lieutenant Nick Mongilio were sent from their carrier to bomb an airfield in southwest Iraq. On the way to the target, they were warned by an E-2C of approaching MiG-21 fighters. While still carrying four 2,000-pound bombs, the F-18s each shot down the two MiGs and then returned to their bombing mission. Having successfully delivered their bombs, the two F-18s safely returned to their carrier, the USS Saratoga. In another incident, the Hornet's ruggedness and ease of maintenance was demonstrated when a Hornet took hits to both engines, flew over 120 miles back to its base, and was repaired and flying within a few days. 
During the 1990s, Navy and Marine Hornets were used continuously during Operation Southern Watch in Iraq and over the skies of Bosnia and Kosovo. Additionally, Hornets flew sorties in 2001 during Operation Enduring Freedom and in 2003 during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Since its introduction into service, the F-18 has participated in every major conflict that the United States has been involved in. And given its forward deployment on carriers and land bases all over the world, the F-18 is likely to be the first responder in any U.S.-involved conflict today. And finally, in 1986, the Blue Angels transitioned to the F-18, which they continue to operate to this day. Performing in countless air shows for millions of spectators, the Blue Angels F-18s have inspired untold numbers of sailors and Marines to join the service. The F-18 has unquestionably made a huge impact on the armed forces of the world, both as a friendly and as an adversary. Even today, you'd be hard-pressed to find an airframe that can fulfill so many roles so well. That alone is an incredible achievement considering the F-18 was designed almost 50 years ago. While the F-18 has and is unquestionably a successful design, nothing lasts forever. The F-18 C and D models have slowly given way to the larger and more advanced E and F Super Hornets, and the Navy is planning to retire all C and D models by 2025. The Marines will continue to operate their C and D models into 2031, and ultimately all F-18s are slated to be replaced by the F-35. Is the F-35 a good replacement for the F-18? What do you think? Leave your comments below, and if you like this video and want to see more, go ahead and subscribe and click on notifications. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.